Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at how to connect Little Nav Map with uh, your favorite frame simulator. In this case we're going to be concentrating on using Microsoft Flight Simulator. And we're also going to show you how you can use Little Nav Map as a way to find cool items and then mark them to come back to them a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, I've got myself myself. This little teeny tiny little airplane. I can't believe it's like an actual like stick between your legs kind of stick. Although for guys, pull up! Oh, ow, I can't talk. Or you start talking in a high voice. But anyway, unrelated. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and see how those two connect. So I actually have a little nav map running over here in the background real quickly. And you'll notice that there's uh, nothing on the screen. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and connect with the flight simulator. Now, if I come up here and click on the connect button, you'll notice there's a connect automatically, which will try to constantly grab onto it, which is a great feature. Or you can come down here and press the connect button directly. Once that works, in the bottom left corner, you're going to see a thing that says connected to simulator. Remember, if you are going to be working with with uh, X-Plane, you have to go ahead and copy those plugins. There was a video a few days ago that showed you how to do that. It'll also tell you who you're connected to down here. It'll tell you a level of detail and everything like that. After you do that, if you want to see your aircraft visually on the screen, all you do is you come up here on the top left of the toolbar, and you're going to click on this little button here, which is now going to make your aircraft visible. You can see I'm sitting here down at Norwood uh, Memorial Airport, and you can also see there's some AI aircraft. Now, if you want the chart to go ahead and follow your aircraft, you can actually click this button right here, which will automatically make this move with the aircraft craft itself. Now, if I were a little bit more fancy of a person, I could do something like this, where I go ahead and close all this out, close all this out, close all this out, and you can actually do something really difficult like this. So, um, unfortunately, the way simulator works, let's see if I can get this to work, 50-50, uh, 50-50, go ahead and give it full power here. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up at the same time. And look at that. Now I have the world's cheapest, most expensive, most laggy uh, moving map that you can possibly have here. Go ahead and get this aircraft airborne. Man, I, this airplane is just so lightweight. Oh, I can't get over that. So now I can go ahead and uh, take off, go ahead and pop the flaps off. And I can actually fly this and basically use this as the world's uh, most complicated navigational map here. And obviously you can always make that a little bit smaller too. Now, the second thing I was going to show you is you'll notice that as I am traveling across the countryside here, my aircraft is constantly updating its little position there on the chart. Now, the reason this is so cool is you can actually use this as a tool to go ahead and identify different points of interest on the ground and actually flag them so that you can come flag back them a little bit later on. Now this really works both ways, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and I'll kind of take my gentle right turn here. It's kind of difficult flying the plane with only uh, one eye. It's kind of like the foggles that they use for IFR flying, but uh, a little more complicated. Go ahead and give myself a little bit of downward trim here. Go ahead and level things off. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and pause my game. Let's go back over to my handy dandy chart real quickly here. Let's say, uh, let's go find something that I'm interested in here. Let me go ahead and undo my snap to map so I can do this. Let's say I want to find the Grove Street Cemetery. I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. I'm going to say add position to flight plan. And I'm also going to come over here. This is my initial starting position. I'm going to go ahead and right click real quickly here and say uh, set this as my departure just to make my life a little bit simpler here. So now I can see visually where I need to fly in order to get to this particular point on the ground. So let's go ahead and uh, re unpause here. That's a technical term, by the way. I'll go ahead and fly to the side here. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time. Oh boy, this is uh, not the safest way to fly for sure. I'm going to go ahead and zig to my left a little bit here. Oh my gosh, this is difficult. Oh, easy, easy, easy. This is going to start lagging so hard. I'm never going to know what hit me. One, two, three. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, swing to my left just a tiny bit here. I've been hanging around my uh, high school students way too much recently. It starts to impact your thing. At least I'm not saying that everything's diesel. Because, you know, not everything is diesel. You know, there are some diesel aircraft, but not everything's diesel. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in on my aircraft one more time here. Zoom to my left side a little bit. Go ahead and reduce it again. I'm being really twitchy here. I'm just demonstrating the concept. I'm going to get a little bit closer. Again, this is plate, particular waypoint is your house. Uh, you can use this now as that reference point. And I got too close. Pause. I feel like I'm an F-16. I'm doing mark points here. And straight down. Ta-da! You can see that it works perfectly for the purposes of identifying things down to the ground. Now, keep in mind, I can save that as a waypoint and actually import it directly into my GPS. So now let's do everything in reverse. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause real quickly here. Whoa, that was an unpause. That was time acceleration. Sorry about that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find an interesting point on the ground, and I'm actually going to use the map as a way to flag that as being an interesting point. What was that? All right, frequency change approved. Have fun. One, two, three. All right, let's go ahead and find something of interest here. Maybe I'm planning a flight for like a future adventure or something like that. Oh, that lake looks like it's a really, really good object that I could use for the purposes of determining where I am. Go ahead and switch over here. And pause. Er 
So now what I've done is I've, I've flown over this particular point. So now what I'll do is I'll go back over to the little nav map, and you'll notice that my aircraft is now over that spot. It's called Jamaica Pond. So what I can do now is I can right click, click user points, and hit add user point here. Now I can actually identify this. So Jamaica, we should be a little more specific because I know I can't spell the word Jamaica the first time I try. J A M A C E. I, I see it. <laughs> I spelled it wrong already. Jam Ica Pond. So now I can come in here instead of a bookmark, I can save it as a bookmark. I could also save it as some kind of location. For example, I can call it a point of interest. I can call this a particular waypoint. You would be careful with waypoints. So I can call this a location. Anything that I need to do. Flag in the old days is basically a fancy thing for a landmark. So I'm actually going to go ahead and I call this one a point of interest. I'm going to go ahead and you can give it description. A useful VFR waypoint if flying over Boston. Go ahead and press OK here. And now you can see I have this little star here so that any time later on I can actually access that information. So if I go up to here and pop it over, let's say I'm going to bring back my uh, information page here. Whoop. Let's bring this here. I go all the way over here to the right. Online centers, online clients. Uh, let's see, logbook. Uh, we have user points. If I click this now, I now have a point of interest that I can access forever and ever and ever and again. You can see I have quite a few of these collected over the years. As you know, I've kind of gone around and done like different like live streams and things like that, and I forget to clean them out. So now I have a useful point of interest that I can use later on. So now let me show you where this gets really, really powerful. So let's say I'm making a flight plan, and I want to use that reference point again. So let's go ahead and create a quick flight plan. I want to say, I know I don't want to save my flight plan. Let's say I'm starting where I was before. Let's go ahead and set it as my departure. Let's say I want to use this point of interest as something into my flight plan. And let's say my ending point, I want to go up here to Lawrence Hanscom. This used to be an airfield. So this is my destination. So now if I go into File and I press Export, Actually, we got to make a quick correction here. We're using the wrong altitude here. Let's use uh, 2,500 feet to keep it nice and simple so I don't go insane here. Let's go ahead and uh, export the flight plan to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, that looks good to me. Press Save. So now what's going to happen is when I open this, this will show up on my GPS. Let me show you. All right, we pop back over here. Go ahead and I'll take a look. Zoom out just a tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and say Load, Save, Load. Let's go ahead and find my VFR real quickly here. Uh, we want to find, let's see here, Norman Memorial. And you'll notice it has this waypoint now on our actual chart as one of our destination points. It won't show up here, but it is a POI. And if I actually um, were to zoom in close enough, you can actually take a look at that. Hang on a second. And now that we head over into the simulator itself, you'll notice that indeed, my little waypoint name actually shows up in our GPS. And this would be true for any GPS device you use. So if I actually were to zoom out here, it says my waypoint is Jamaica, <laughs> which is kind of interesting because that's not actually my waypoint, but it is that location that I have flagged right here. So now I can actually fly back to that point of interest a little bit later on. All right, hopefully this video has been helpful as far as uh, determining uh, what you can kind of do with that tool. Oh, what the heck is that? Ha! Huh. You know, I've heard about uh, new technology for measuring the wind, but I've never seen that before. But uh, hopefully this video has been helpful as far as, uh, you know, kind of understanding what you can do with a little nav map as far as point of interest and bringing them back into the simulator. And again, it, it's a pretty powerful tool and uh, it beats doing it manually, that's for sure. Enjoy.